Agriculture. It kind of sucks. Practices like monocropping, clear cutting, pesticides, and a reliance on fossil fuels means that our agriculture system is just really unsustainable. When I realized this, I began to resent being dependent on a system that is essentially stealing life from future generations to fund our consumption today. That's why I started to learn how to grow my own food, and I started a garden in my backyard. What I quickly found was that there's a lot to know about plants, and so I began to ask myself a question. How do I automate this? In other words, how do I make this just a whole lot more difficult than it needs to be? This project started out pretty simple. I found myself repeatedly googling the same sort of information for different plants, so I created an Excel sheet to store information for later. I'm just going to go through each column and discuss how each bit of information is useful in the garden. This first column, called Start, tells us whether or not a plant should be started indoors or outdoors. In the spring, we can get a head start on the growing season by starting some plants indoors under a grow light and then moving them outside once it gets warm enough. But some plants don't like this and so you're supposed to start them outdoors. This is important because plants which are started indoors are going to have two planting dates in the spring, whereas plants which are started outdoors are just going to have one. This next column, called Season, determines whether or not a plant is warm or cool season. Warm season plants require warm temperatures, so they have one planting window where they use the heat of the summer to do most of their growth. Cool season plants can tolerate some colder temperatures, so they have two planting windows. One in the spring, as it's just beginning to get warm, and one in the fall, as it's just beginning to get cold. These next three columns store the amount of days relative to the first and the last frost dates that we want to plant each plant. The frost dates are the first and the last days in the year where it gets cold enough to have frost. In zone 9, where I am, the frost dates are around mid-April and late October. Usually, when you go online and search when to plant a certain plant, you're going to get an amount of days relative to these frost dates, so that's what these columns store. So with those five columns, we have enough information to be able to make a visual representation in a calendar. I wrote a script in Visual Basic that turns a blank Excel sheet into a calendar, with the days on the horizontal and the list of plants on the vertical. I then wrote another script which goes through every plant, and for every one, it figures out each day that it needs to be sowed and or transplanted, and then puts it in the calendar. At this point, I was feeling pretty good. I'd never really written any code before that had any actual practical application. But at the same time, I just wasn't really satisfied. These planting dates, well, they're only really heuristics, at best estimations, and I wanted something a bit more accurate. My first idea was to add two columns storing temperature preference, and then use an online service like Open Weather Map to tell me the minimum and the maximum temperature every day. Then I could compare those temperatures to the plant preferences and represent that visually in the calendar. This would allow me to, in addition to using the planting date estimates, also check whether or not the past few days have been within an acceptable temperature. There's a few problems with this approach though. First is that an online weather service is only going to be able to give me weather data from a nearby weather station, which isn't going to be exactly accurate to my backyard. Also, air temperature is highly variable across time, and if I use it to constrain my planting dates, it may tell me not to plant, even when the temperature jumps outside my preferred range for a very short amount of time. The best solution that I could think of was, instead of using air temperature, using soil temperature. Soil temperature is going to be exactly accurate to my soil, and it's also way less variable across time. The only problem is, there's no online service that can give me the soil temperature in my backyard. I'd have to build my own sensor. So that's exactly what I did. For the sensor, I'm using a DS18B20, a digital temperature sensor made for pretty much exactly this sort of application. I'm pairing it with an ESP8266, which is basically just an Arduino with built-in Wi-Fi. I'm also using a 44mAh LiPo battery, a 2W solar panel, and a solar charger. The circuit design is pretty simple. 
The DS18 is connected to the ESP with the ground, the 3.3V and the GPIO 5 pin, which is also pulled up using a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor. The solar panel and the battery are connected to the solar charger, which is connected to the ESP. This is nice because the solar charger handles all the interactions between these three components. I've also wired GPIO 16 to reset. This enables us to use the real-time clock on the ESP to wake itself up, allowing us to use deep sleep, which saves a lot of power. I needed a way for my ESP to talk to my computer, and for that, I chose a Node.js web server. The server is pretty simple. It starts up whenever I start my PC, and then it listens on a certain port for messages. Whenever it receives one, it prints it to a CSV file, which we can then read from in Excel later on. There is a problem with this though. The ESP is only going to be able to send data if the web server is running, but I'm not going to keep my computer on all the time. The solution to this is to store data on the flash memory of the ESP, but the problem with this is that the data is only going to be useful if it's time stamped, and the ESP doesn't have any way of knowing what time it is if it's not able to establish a connection. I was able to solve these problems by splitting the logic on the ESP into two paths. First, if the ESP is able to establish a successful connection, it asks the web server for the current date and then writes that into a file. It then sends the current temperature reading along with all the other readings in memory. If the ESP is not able to establish a successful connection, instead of asking the web server for the date, it looks in the file and uses that to timestamp the temperature reading. It then increments the date by one hour and writes it back into the file in case it's not able to connect the next time it wakes up. This setup does rely on the assumption that the ESP is able to wake itself up every hour on the hour, but this isn't actually the case. The ESP clock just isn't quite that accurate, but it's accurate enough that it doesn't go out of sync unless it can't connect for more than a few days. So the final part here is that I needed a way to put my electronics outside safely, and for that I 3D printed an enclosure, which broke immediately. I then made another one, printed that, and it also broke immediately. But it broke less bad, and I've been using it just fine, though I do need to get a bit better at 3D modeling. So to put everything together, I uploaded the code to my ESP, I started the web server, I put the sensor outside, and well, it worked. Pretty well, actually. I wasn't quite getting 24 readings a day, but I was getting enough to use for the calendar. I did notice that sometimes the formatting of the data would be weird or it would be missing certain values, and so I had to write code that would throw out any values that didn't match the requirements, which is why I wasn't quite getting 100% of the data in. It was pretty simple to then write a script that would read all the data from the CSV and put it into the Excel sheet, and then from there into the planting calendar. As you can see, it colors all the cells green that have temperature within the acceptable range and all the cells red that don't. So that's pretty much it for this stage of the project. However, there are some things that I'm going to need to change. First of all, Excel and Visual Basic, well, it's a really good program for doing a lot of things, but just take a look at this code. It's not the most flexible thing in the world. I want to expand on this project in the future, and so I'm going to need to use software that is more easily expandable to different things. Also, the WebSocket that I used in Node.js isn't the most reliable thing in the world. I want to use something that's more specific to this application, something like an MQTT server. Finally, I made some big mistakes in the ESP code. Mainly, I used the string class instead of using character arrays. Now, I'm not an expert in C++ or anything, but I'm pretty sure that the string class is just not something you're supposed to use, especially when you're using a microcontroller which is constrained with memory. If you'll go to the description, you'll notice that I don't have any code link there, and that's because I'm currently in the process of just redoing this entire project. Instead of using Excel, I'm using Python, and I'm making a web app with Flask and Dash. Instead of using a Node.js WebSocket, I'm using an MQTT server hosted on a Raspberry Pi, and I'm gonna just redo all the code for the ESP to use character arrays instead of the string class. In the next video in this series, I'll be showing all the changes that I'm making, and I'll be posting my code in the description, so if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Also, if you have any ideas for where I could take this project in the future, I'd really appreciate you share those in the comments. Otherwise, I'm planning to make a lot more content related to sustainability, futurism, and animal rights, so if any of those topics interest you, please subscribe. 
And until then, peace out.